Good afternoon. You're listening to Clearing the Air on KFCF Fresno 88.1 FM. This is Clearing the Air. I'm your host, Dolores Weller from the Central Valley Air Quality Coalition. And this program is brought to you every fourth Friday at 3 p.m. And we cover... Uh, air quality issues and we bring you guests that are at the forefront of air quality policy, research, uh, organizing, uh, advocates, and so on. And, and uh, the show is hosted by uh, CVAC. I am uh, the, the executive director and our coalition is basically a partnership of uh, about 70 organizations throughout the valley and state and our mission is to improve the air quality here in the San Joaquin Valley and we do so through through policy advocacy uh, creating awareness and and uh, mobilizing our members and and the community to to create change here in the valley and um, today we have a really um, really exciting topic to to talk about we are going to talk about community choice energy and I'm guessing this might be the first time for a lot of listeners um, to, to hear hear what community choice energy is um, and it's an exciting opportunity for for uh, valley communities to to kind of take control of their energy sources so we have uh, Woody Hastings he's the Re- renewable energy implementation manager from the Center for Climate Protection and he's on the show with us thanks Woody for joining well thanks thank you for having me Dolores and uh, hello KFCS listeners Great. So, Woody's going to tell us all about community choice energy and and what it how it can all uh, fit into the San Joaquin Valley. Um, Woody, can you before we get started, can you tell us about a little bit about yourself and uh, the Center for Climate Protection, your the goals there at your organization? Sure. Just a little bit about myself. Uh, my background is uh, I have a background in environmental justice issues, been working on environmental and, and energy policy for over 25 years. Um, initially started out with uh, Communities for a Better Environment down in the L.A. LA area, working on air quality issues there, community right to know laws, things like that. Um, And I first became engaged with Community Choice Energy in the mid-2000s when I was living in San Francisco, working on the early efforts there in San Francisco, and moved up to Sonoma County. I'm based in Sonoma County, Center for Climate Protection based in Sonoma County, and I joined the Center for Climate Protection in 2010. And the Center for Climate Protection is founded in 2001 with a mission to reduce greenhouse gas uh, emissions. We do work statewide. We work uh, vis-a-vis, we work in Sacramento a bit, vis-a-vis the California Public Utilities Commission uh, on policies. And uh, the Center for Climate Protection really adopted this methodical process to look at uh, how do we reduce, you know, effective ways to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, really looking at the local local and regional level. So it's a process that first uh, undertakes to take an inventory of uh, the greenhouse gases, where are they coming from, greenhouse gas accounting, if you will, Uh, setting targets, creating a plan to meet the targets, implementing the plan, uh, and then taking inventory again to to check the results. So we're in that process. We're in the process of implementing it. Um, really, and, and part of this was identifying community choice energy uh, in the process of putting together a community climate action plan in 2008, identified community choice energy as really the number one uh, means available to local governments to reduce greenhouse gas emissions dramatically. Um, and, you know, it's a pretty complex topic, and um, we're not going to be able to cover all of it here, so I just up front want to let folks know that we have established uh, a dedicated website uh, that uh, seeks to try to give sort of a primer on community choice and answer questions for both uh, you know members of the public as well as local governments that are looking at community choice and that website is the cleanpowerexchange.org website 
Um, so uh, that's where you can find a lot of the information that we'll be talking about today. And folks can sign up there for news blasts about what's going on in the San Joaquin Valley relative to Community Choice Energy. Great. Woody, can you tell us just the, the very basic kind of, you know, the, the history, the, the legislation that, that allowed Community Choice to exist and, and what it really just basically means? Yeah. But what is it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> very good question. So we, we try to put it in a nutshell, you know, the little elevator speech of what it is, it is a local not-for-profit program that buys and can generate its own electricity, but buys and, and then provides electricity to local residents and businesses. Um, it is not involved in, it doesn't, it's not a complete takeover of the electricity system, including the poles and the wires and all that. It's just involved in taking local governments, it's available just to local governments, cities and counties. Uh, and it only involves the decision making about the sources of electricity. So is the, the, the question here, and it's a really important piece of the whole electricity puzzle, puzzle, especially relative to reducing greenhouse gas emissions and addressing air quality issues. Um, which is, you know, are we going to get be getting more of our power over time from solar, wind, geothermal, hydro, or are we going to continue with fossil sources and other uh, dangerous, hazardous uh, energy production um, sources? So uh, it, it's something that's available to local governments. It was uh, made possible by a state law that was passed in 2002. It was not really available until 2005 because it takes a few years for the Public Utilities Commission to uh, dot the I's and cross the T's. So the first, there are now five community choice agencies up and running in the state. Um, it's really become a movement. We just recently counted the number of cities and counties uh, in the state that are currently evaluating community choice. Out of the 58 counties in the state, 26 have some uh, degree of evaluation underway and over 300 uh, you know, cities, townships, uh, evaluating community choice. So, so it's really gone from a sort of an obscure thing in the early, uh, you know, around 2010 when the first community choice agency launched, Marin Clean Energy, launched in 2010. There are now five up and running. Uh, so Marin, uh, we our involvement, we were very much, I was very much involved from 2010 to 2014, helping to initiate the second community choice agency in the state, Sonoma Clean Power, which launched in May of 2014. We now have Lancaster Choice Energy in Lancaster in the Southern California Edison Electric Service Territory launched in May of 2015. Mm -hmm. And just this past May of 2016, San Francisco launched uh, their program and on October 3rd, San Mateo County is going to be launching Peninsula Clean Energy. So, it, the, you know, it, it, there are five, you know, five, soon to be five up and running. Um, and to sort of break it down in terms of, you know, what's in it for residents and what's in it for the local governments, you know, we, we, we tend to refer to what community choice is really all about. It's, it's energy democracy. And, and what do I mean by that? It means for residents and businesses, there's more, there's a choice for the last hundred years with the regulated monopolies, the big, big utilities, PG&E, Southern California, Edison, San Diego Gas and Electric. That's all you, that's, that's all we have. Uh, and there's really no choice about our, our electric service. So this introduces a choice. Uh, it also introduces a voice for communities uh, as they are public agencies and so folks can attend the decision making meetings and weigh in uh, and uh, hear about the decisions being made and weigh in on decisions about rates, programs, opportunities uh, for, um, f for their relative to their energy um, provision. And for the local governments, you know, the elected officials are the ones that really make the decision about this. And, you know, the thing that gets their, their attention is that what this is about, it's not a taxpayer-funded uh, program. It is a program that really runs on the revenues. There's an existing revenue stream. And so it's about redirecting that revenue stream of millions and millions of dollars that leaves a community currently to pay for electricity generation, which is about half of your electric bill. 
um, and that gets redirected to the decision making control of the local. So rather than that that funding going directly to PG&E, for example, it comes back to the municipality. That kind of half, right. r- roughly half of the bill. Right, and to be clear, a lot of that goes to pay for the electricity, but there are net revenues that can be put to good purposes to benefit the local economy, to create jobs, to create programs that, uh, you know, do any number of things relative to, uh, you know, incentivizing solar for, uh, you know, for low-income folks and electric vehicles, electrification of transportation and uh, making uh, electric vehicles more broadly available, that kind of thing that can uh, obviously uh, improve air quality. Mm-hmm. And do do um, do uh, ratepayers see a change in, in the, the cost of their energy by joining Community Choice? Well, in every case so far, uh, from Marin Clean Energy launching in 2010 to uh, the current uh, launch of Peninsula Clean Energy, uh, there is a, a, a small uh, rate discount. Uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's not enormous. We are... Um, uh, hoping and expecting that over time uh, that uh, uh, you know rate uh, different differential will uh, increase uh, but yes currently the default service the default programs are lower costs uh, mm-hmm. you know being a nonprofit and all the not-for-profit uh, entity uh, there are uh, ways that you know uh, these smaller agencies can um, uh, reduce costs and uh, provide uh, lower rates. Um, so yes, we are seeing that with all of them. All right. So it's so it's really. I mean, to summarize some of the benefits, I'm hearing, um, you know, choosing where your energy comes from, you know, whether it's solar, wind, et cetera, and and having that local control, um, some you know revenue investment in the the local community as well, and and also some some lower rates. But what are what are some of the the necessary steps? Are there challenges to kind of get that up and running for a municipality to to agree to to take on um, you know such a such a new idea, new concept? Sure, I'll speak to that. I just really want to put a number to uh, to what we were just talking about about mm-hmm. the ratepayer benefit. In the case of Sonoma Clean Power, the one I'm most familiar with, uh, recently in. Uh, uh, pegged the ratepayer savings since its launch in May of 2014 at $62 million in direct ratepayer savings. Wow. So, you know, so it's a significant thing. And there's 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 other numbers that I can put to that, but, but I'll get to your immediate question. So, yeah, I mean, the first part really is education. That's, that's why we're talking on the phone here uh, <laughs> on the radio. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, to, uh, you know, the, the, to apprise the public uh, and, and, uh, community leaders that this is a public policy tool that is available to them to redirect that revenue stream into local control to, to benefit the local economy, to achieve rate uh, rate reductions. Um, and so it's first this sort of process of, of learning about community choice energy. Um, we are in a a stage right now where we are uh, trying to get the city, uh, city of, cities of Fresno and Fresno County and other cities in, in the San Joaquin Valley to place an item on their agenda to have an informational session about community choice. Um, that's really sort of the first step. Uh, there are any number of steps along the way where um, in most cases uh, communities, Sonoma County here in Sonoma County and other communities invest some initial resources to put together a technical study to review what the local energy use is, what the uh, various uh, factors are, what the potential is for uh, energy mix and rate reductions and other uh, aspects. Um, so a technical study, uh, for, you know, starting with informational uh, you know, hearings at the County Board of Supervisors or Fresno City Council, um, and then um, looking at investing um, some some dollars into technical studies. Now, in every case, I should say, the monies that have been invested up front to get these uh, these programs up and running have rapidly been repaid by the revenues that come in once the program is up and running. Hmm. Um, so that that's something that's been been uh, you know proven to be a good model for launching them. Where the you know once the program is up and running, it can rapidly repay the initial startup costs. 
And once a, a municipality does agree to to uh, in you know to to pursue community choice, what are some of the are there infrastructure investments that the the city needs to take in or county needs to take into consideration? I'm assuming if they choose to um, go towards solar or wind. Can you tell us about kind of the, the nuts and bolts of it all? Sure, and, and that's where the local economic benefit uh, comes into play. Community choice agencies do have the statutory authority to develop their own uh, owned energy assets or, or assets that are uh, developed uh, as a result of uh, any number of policies and programs they can institute. They can provide what's known as in the industry as a standard offer uh, or a feed-in tariff uh, to developers to, to put together a certain kind of solar installation that's appropriate to the community, that kind of thing. Um, they can do community solar programs. Um, they can develop brownfields. They can identify places in their jurisdiction that, you know, might be suitable for, say, a solar uh, installation. There's not a lot of wind in the Central Valley, so that's that's kind of unlikely. So we really are talking, when we talk about renewable energy, a lot of times we're really just talking about solar. Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, The Center for Climate Protection just released uh, an economic uh, impact study for the city of San Jose, and we are going to be doing a similar study for the Central Valley. And what it's really, in a nutshell, what it shows is that millions of dollars uh, invested in uh, renewable energy results in billions of dollars in, in infrastructure de uh, development and local economic impact. So, um, you know, that report is available at cleanpowerexchange.org, and um, we're going to be sharing that with the uh, community leaders there in the Central Valley and, and going, as I said, going to be doing a similar um, study there in the Central Valley on what what is the economic impact or the potential impact if you establish a community choice energy uh, agency. Great. And, and if uh, listeners are just joining us, uh, you're listening to Clearing the Air, and uh, we're talking about community choice energy here on KFCF Fresno 88.1 FM. Um, I'm your host, Dolores Weller, and we're talking with Woody Hastings from the Center for Climate Protection. Um, and, and also want to remind uh, listeners that um, this station is listener supported. So that means everything, 100% percent of, of our support um, comes from our listeners and and your support keeps KFCF on the air. There are no government grants, uh, corporate underwriting, um, and so we, we would greatly appreciate if you uh, called in to the office here and, and made, made a pledge to support uh, KFCF. The number is 559-573-3350. And um, I, whenever we have a pledge drive, I, I, I love to talk about how um, programming like this is really needed in the San Joaquin Valley. Um, as everyone knows, this is a very conservative region, and um, we, we really need to bring balance to the media. And, um, you know, we have a lot of great local programming here, progressive, uh, a lot of great uh, programs that highlight all of the amazing work that's being done here in the San Joaquin Valley. Our programming um, obviously covers a lot of air pollution, climate change issues like we're discussing today that uh, you really don't hear about anywhere else in the San Joaquin Valley. And so, again, really important to support uh, the station. And, and the programming to keep it alive. Um, call in to 559-573-3350. And uh, you could also go on uh, the website, kfcf.org, by sending uh, or a check to P.O. Box 4364, Fresno 93744. Um, so, so again, really important to, to support this station. We've been here on this show, uh, doing this program for six years now, and, um, we're able to, to share the program with our membership and the public. Um, you know, the archives are a really great educational tool as well. So really important and um, just, you know, a small, small uh, amount can really go a long way if we all call in and support this local station, 559-573-3350. 
And so I want to continue the conversation on uh, community choice, um, hearing a lot of great, great um, information from Woody. And, and as he said, check out cleanpowerexchange.org for more info. Um, can you tell us a little bit more, just a little bit more about the um, success stories? Um, I know you mentioned a couple of counties and Lancaster, just kind of one of the more recent ones. Um a little, you know, some more detail on these the success stories and how it's developed. Yeah, sure. I mean, Lancaster, um, they're, 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 they launched in May of 2015 and really hit the ground running. They demonstrated a um, uh, couple of things. I mean, they demonstrated that uh, when there's political will, you can really get a community choice energy program up and running pretty quickly from the fr- from their first initiation of it to the time they uh, launched their service was just uh, a 24-month period. Um, and so they were able to do it really, really quickly. Um, and I should say, you know, uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, led by a re- Republican uh, uh, a mayor and a relatively conservative community. So this wasn't really, we see community choice as something that's got a broad appeal across the political spectrum. So this isn't just sort of a, a sort of a green environmental thing necessarily. Necessarily, although it has enormous benefits, and that's why the Center for Climate Protection uh, is involved. But the uh, opportunities for the private sector and for uh, local economic benefit really have uh, a broad appeal. And um, in the case of Lancaster, you know, they've got a lot of sunshine. It's a high desert community, a lot of sunshine, and a lot of land. So um, they're really uh, going um, long on doing um, larger solar projects uh, and um, they also have a program where they're electrifying their, their the buses in the Lancaster um, area and a lot of other um, interesting programs to advance um, solar and electrification of uh, the transportation system. In the case of Marin County, um, they've got some... Um, Great projects going. They've done solar projects at a at an abandoned quarry. They've got uh, solar, uh, one megawatt of solar on the San Rafael Airport. I think a total of something like 20 megawatts of solar, uh, local solar online in Marin County. And they have a program for folks called Local Soul, where you can the the rate that you pay. Um, is a rate that's uh, calibrated to the uh, local solar project, so it's really paying. You're you're paying to help uh, incentivize the local solar uh, development, and they also have a 10 megawatt project in Richmond. That's um, Richmond uh, City of Richmond is a, a participant in Marine Clean Energy, and so they have uh, a project there that's employing no less than 50 percent of the uh, uh, of the employment there is from the local community, and so. Um, uh, I mentioned earlier about Sonoma Clean Power, sixty-two million in direct right. power savings. Yeah, and, and Lancaster definitely will will be an important kind of story to tell here in the San Joaquin Valley, as you said. There was that's a demonstration of political will in a in a conservative region. Sounds very much like like our valley, and um, you know where we have a lot of climate change deniers, but that doesn't necessarily have to um, you know kind of hinder hinder participation in, in this this program. Right. Right, and they also demonstrate something called the single jurisdiction model, which by which I mean that it's just the city of Lancaster mm-hmm. that launched their own program. It's not uh, a combination of cities and counties or anything like that, but what's called a joint powers authority. Here in Sonoma County, it's a joint powers authority. It's the county and eight eligible cities in the county that join together to do this. Um, that's the same case in Marin and, Pen- and Peninsula Clean Energy in San Mateo County. Lancaster is just the city of Lancaster. So it's sort of uh, when when you walk into City Hall, you'll see there's a desk and it's Lancaster Choice Energy, and there's the folks there that are really you know largely city staff folks that uh, administer Lancaster's Community Choice Energy program. So you know any one of the cities in Fresno itself, uh, if it so chose, could launch its own program. Right. Uh, and uh, you know if if it worked out, you know Fresno getting together with some of the other cities uh, and or the county uh, could. Uh, form a joint powers authority. Right, and so, um, you know, thinking about how this could develop here in the San Joaquin Valley, and then I, I know from uh, talking with you, Woody, we've, uh, there may, uh, maybe almost more than a decade ago, um, Community Choice was, was um, attempted to, to develop here in the valley, 
And I think there were some concerns at that time as to what sources were clean versus um, uh, maybe, you know, impacting environmental justice communities. And that's an issue that that we we discuss quite quite a lot here on on the, the radio. So how do we make sure that community choice energy doesn't, you know, bring forward a, a, you know, quote unquote, you know, clean project or clean energy project that isn't necessarily beneficial to the community? Sure, that, that's a really good point to bring up. And yes, there was a, an effort. Uh, the San Joaquin Valley Power Authority uh, was a very early effort in the mid 2000s to launch a community choice energy program. Um, you know, and I think it was largely the economic downturn in 2008 that really disrupted that effort, uh, among other issues. Um, and so, you know, early pioneering effort. And um, as we've seen with some other areas, San Jose, the city of San Jose itself had invested investigated community choice uh, energy early on and decided not to do it. Well, uh, one of the things I say, it's a new day for CCA, uh, community choice, uh, and meaning that, well, now we have five of them up and running. Um, there has been some legislation passed in 2012 that helps to uh, strengthen uh, the ability of communities to uh, launch a project, a part of why the San Joaquin Valley Power Authority and, uh, you know, uh, didn't work out was a lot of the obstruction at that time from the big utility PG&E in this case um, and that 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 caused uh, caused that um, to not succeed um, so yeah so you know the state of California has a definition for renewable energy and so uh, it, it, you know it may be that there's some uh, need for some legislation to def- to uh, redefine um, some of some of what is uh, uh, eligible uh, under the renewable energy uh, portfolio standard here in the state. Um, one thing I'll say is that with community choice energy, at least there is a, a greater degree of local control about what kinds of projects uh, get cited. Uh, it's it's not a panacea, though. There's no, um, you know, community choice agencies don't usurp land use authority, things like that. Um, and other entities that are developing projects can still do that. Um, projects developed by a community choice agency, though, um, offer a degree uh, of control and a degree of the ability for the local community to benefit from whatever projects they do uh, they do adopt. So, you know, there's, there's, and as I said earlier, an opportunity for the input from the local community, a voice from the local community, where the, all of these uh, meetings, decision-making meetings of a community choice program uh, are under the Brown Act, and so these are all subject to the open law meetings of the state of California. Great. Right. So that's that's definitely where people can, can be um, participating on an ongoing process and really contribute to, um, you know, what, what the city or, or county decides in, in their right. as sources a, as of energy. To these decisions being made behind a closed boardroom door right. at a distant corporate office. Great. Well, we're running out of time, Woody. Um, thank you so much for, for joining us. Where can we learn more and what's coming up? If you can tell us briefly. Well, something I do want to mention, I will be there in the Central Valley at the San Joaquin Valley Clean Transportation Summit on October 19th, Mm -hmm. Wednesday, October 19th. This is going to be at the Clovis Veterans Memorial District. I'll have a little table set up with information, be there to answer questions. Um, It's at 808 4th Street in Clovis. It's free, um, and it goes from uh, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Wednesday, October 19th, so that's an opportunity for people to come meet uh, find out all about electric vehicles and uh, all the other clean transportation and the website one more time uh, the website is cleanpowerexchange.org for um, information about community choice and what we're doing and folks can sign up there to receive regular uh, news blasts Great. Um, and we do have three correspondents that work in the Central Valley, one in Stockton, one in Fresno, and one in Tulare County. And so uh, get in touch with us, and we'd be happy to help you learn more about community choice. Great. Thank you so much, Woody, for joining the show. You've been listening to Clearing the Air on KFCF Fresno 88.1 FM. I'm your host, Dolores Sweller, and we've been talking to Woody Hastings from the Center for Climate Protection. Thank Thanks you, for uh, listening. Thank you, Woody. And our next show, be on the 28th of October at 3 p.m. Hope you'll join us.